evening, everyone. This is the second episode of the Egyptian Hulk podcast. You could contact us by uh, by email at the, the Egyptian Hulk podcast at gmail.com. And you could listen to the episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, Anchor, uh, Google Podcasts, anywhere, anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> and today's guest is Amin. I mean, he's from Syria. He's an artist and he's currently studying um, arts, visual, audiovisual arts. And uh, so introduce yourself. Mm, hey, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I should start. <laughs> uh, I'm Amin, uh, I'm 23 years old. Uh, I study at the Higher Institute for Dramatic Arts. Um, my occupation is light designing and visual art but the main the main studies is light designing uh, and personally um, I'm, a, I'm a photographer and a videographer and I also do editing myself mm-hmm. like I love to do the whole process myself I think it's about emotions and uh, to get the right emotion you have to have every aspect of every perspective of your own project and that's what i'm trying to do great and where were you born and when were you born <laughs> um i was born in uh 98 i guess uh, mm. i was born in damascus uh, mm. But then I traveled to the UK. Uh, I spent about a year and a half there, and then I went back uh, because uh, the situation was normal back then, and uh, my parents wanted me like mm. t- to get in touch with my my heritage and like my my own nationality, you know. And I was I was there mm. living. Uh, in my in my aunt house she lives there and i was i was i, was, I wanted i wanted to continue life there but uh, you know old traditional parents <laughs> they wanted me to stay under well, their wings the UK they the wanted Moscow? me to be raised uh no nah, uh, my my parents was in damascus i was in the uk mm. yes yes mm. yeah so I went back uh, for the first grade. Uh, I was about uh, five years, five years and a half when I went back. And there was a huge gap, a culture gap at the first place. And, uh, you know, just a, a life gap. Like uh, I, was, I, was, I was living there and the whole process of life, you know, it just, it's just different. Like the first day in my school, <laughs> I remember I was I was like this cool kid who came with jeans and boots that has lights, you know. And I got this bad this cool Batman pen, mm. and they stole it and they kicked me, <laughs> like like they really kicked my ass, you know. <clears throat> I got a hell of a beating the first day at school. Mm. <laughs> so back then I knew like like that's it, <laughs> like that's it. This is life from now. Yeah, uh, but then, but then you know, I st- I started wrapping my head around the place, the culture. Like, uh, but, but I have to tell you something. I'm I'm not originally Syrian. I'm 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 a Palestinian. Uh, originally, I'm a Palestinian, mm. but um, I was born in Damascus because uh, um, from forty eight, like my grand my my grandpa left Palestine when he was seven years old, back in forty eight. And uh, like my even even my, even even my my parents has uh, been born here, but I I come from a Palestinian ethnic like I'm from Nasr yes 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 I'm from Nasr mm. so yeah um, like uh, Jesus <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh like jesus uh but uh yeah yeah i, I, I only told you that because uh, uh in yermuk camp uh, where i lived 
for about 14 years of my life. Uh, the main the main culture was Palestine, not Syria. Like I didn't get introduced to Syrian culture until I was like 15, because in Yarmouk camp you had only one purpose in life to go back, like to to li- to liberate Palestine, to 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 have that name once again, you know, to get the Israelis out. All of all of mm. that culture, I, I was raised on that. So when I was about 10 years old, uh, I started doing theater. I, I love theater, you know. Uh, I had a dream first to be an actor. Mm. So, yeah, and, and, and uh, like not a dr- not cinema actor or television actor. Yeah, I love I loved theater, you know. I love theater in a way I couldn't understand at that age. Mm. I just felt a true connection with the stage, with with the way of saying things like out loud uh, in like in 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 a directed way to the audience and just the environment of the theater just just you know that that was the thing for me back then so i started working there uh, did, i joined did you get the group. To perform? yeah i performed and and i won an award when i was 14 years old <laughs> so i i did a lot of work in theater yeah <laughs> And then in like in 2016, uh, I started being a director. I made three shows as a director in theater. Mm. So yeah. Three I, uh, plays yeah, I spent, like, uh, or uh, short movies? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, theater plays. Uh, we work with a, with a huge mm. group mm. of uh, of people from the age of 14 to the age of 26. And we did uh, a six-month workshop that we all learned together. Like we we made exercises, we rehearsed things, which we started talking. It was it was therapy in a way, but theater is a therapy in a way. So it's 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 the way how you you let yourself go, how you become more honest with yourself on stage without even considering con- uh, consequences or, or actions. You just you just live the moment like at the moment you know and uh, and the way you get there is mm. by training yourself to to become more open with yourself and more true with yourself on stage and in in daily life because a great actor is a great actor everywhere that was my theory at the first place so and then yeah uh, and then like uh, for after 2 years of being of training in theater, uh, I bought my camera, my first camera. Uh, I always had a crush, you know, on photography. I always loved the idea of a photo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just enjoyed. Like you can, you can freeze a moment. You can capture an emotion. Like that. That's that was the main, the main thing that got me into this. Like you're able to get an emotion. <clears throat> I'm sorry. the The idea of of, of you know capturing a moment uh, and and somehow like reaching to others and letting other get that emotion, that's like the best thing you could ask of life, you know. Uh, uh, that's it. Uh, and no, uh, uh, in in 2013, uh, I volunteered uh, in an NGO. Uh, it was meant to help uh, the Syrian refugees that uh, that started like uh, getting the mass of of the war, which started in two thousand and eleven. Mm. So people started to leave in their homes. Uh, some NGOs uh, started opening uh, schools that uh, like abandoned schools and like re uh, mm. you know, and just setting it up to become to become camps. So I spent there two years. I became the official photographer mm. for the NGO, documenting uh, everything. Uh, that was like a very important period of my life. I've met a lot of like people who influenced me until today, musicians or painters or actors or just artists who had, or just not ordinary people who are artists who doesn't do any art related, but they are artists. Uh, in a way, I was so influenced by them 
uh, and I got to the point that I started believing that we can change something, that we can we can impact something by being true, by by having something to say, a true a true something to say, you know. Uh, and and I was like, and I was confused. I, I was I was so young. I was so young, and I got into a lot of things at a young age, which really didn't get me to to really understand the process of it in the meantime. But then, like afterward, I got to a conclusion of what I've been through is what I'm now. You know, what I, what I have become. So. Mm. At some point, uh, I started like losing, losing it. Like uh, I didn't have a clear vision of of life, of of what I wanted, of what I wanted to do in life. You know. Mm. Um, at that time, I, I've left, um, I've left Yermuk camp because of the war too. Like I, I, I moved out. Like. Not, not I on mean, purpose, let's, let's but... pause. Yeah, let's pause totally. for a minute and go back to 2011 so that it could yes. be more uh, organized. So, yeah. what what were you thinking? Do you remember anything late March 2011 when everything started boiling? Mm, I, I was I was so young back then. Uh, I was 13, so mm. I understood that that something is happening. But I really didn't get to understand what really happened, like until <laughs> ten years later. Um, like <laughs> until now, I don't. I don't think. I don't think I really. I, I really understood what what really happened back then. Like I lived. I lived a few of the moments in in my hometown, mm. and I I heard a bunch of stories from from a lot of people who came through life like afterwards and i'm telling you this because uh, let's be clear i do not trust the media i do not trust anything the media says whatever whatever side they are on like it's always it's always the idea of controlling your mind I, i'm not i'm not i'm not uh, like a, i do not believe in theories but but i believe that uh, um, like media is is meant for this it's meant to to popularize ideas Based on the, ba- the 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 one who's paying for for this, you know, no matter who he is or what he's trying to say, but but that that's how it works. So I I the, the good thing that uh, I based my my assumptions, you know, based on true stories or based of what I've been through. So until now, I I don't have a clear vision that I can talk about if if you if i'm allowed to say that <laughs> uh, but uh, i think in a way what happened was uh, a reaction a reaction of uh, of many years uh, but the reaction wasn't uh, wasn't put out correctly because we didn't have uh, like we didn't have the right iq to make a revolution uh, we need like we need years of 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 education and and like conscience like real conscience you know to to reach a level that we can understand what is a revolution and what do we want eventually like i do not believe that it is it's only the act of a revolution that it will change it's uh, it's the, if it's i'm sorry it's understanding what you want eventually it's like uh, having a destination that you want to go there. Like I, I want to reach my people there, and we didn't have that. We, we started just doing a reaction based on actions, and that doesn't get you anywhere. You have to start by doing an action, not a reaction. So that that's that's what what I think happened. Like people got frustrated over, you know. Like uh, it started based on emotion, man. It didn't start based on anything else. Like people got so caught up with just stories, literally just stories. Like it reached everywhere based on stories before it actually happened. So, but then it happened. Like 
another action happened and then another reaction happened and just things went to hell. We got to a war. We got literally a war zone, man. And I'm saying this because I was I was in Yermuk camp when I left my hometown. Uh, the man who, who who showed a gun at my face wasn't even Arabic. Man. He was he was I, I don't know he was I yani I have no idea what kind of language he was talking, but I think his you know he looks like from. Ukraine or something like that and, and and I was so scared like how the hell is he is he here holding a gun at my face and and I'm mm. from here I've when, lived here when, all my when life was, when did that happen uh 2012 after one year uh, like uh, uh, in the late uh, yeah late 2012 it started like we started moving out mm. um, because uh, a lot of groups has uh, infiltrated into our society and uh, mm. it started uh, being like uh, i don't know what the correct uh, word for it but uh, i think uh, i think Militia. it started I mean, he was one of the militiamen of uh... uh yes yes but the militias was uh, like uh, it was it was hiding between neighborhoods and it was really difficult to locate them or understand when they are going to appear. So it's really started to be dangerous for everyone to stay there. That's why it happened at the first place. Mm. But why did you say that it was based on emotion? When the Syrian regime obviously has a, a huge record of torture and forced the disappearances and so forth so why do you think it's emotion and not these and based on these people reached a climax point that they couldn't take it anymore what do you think uh, because man i'm saying this because uh, i live now in damascus and uh, from interacting with people now on the streets i understand that it was based on emotions because if they can handle now, trust me, uh, 2011 was a piece of cake for them. It was the easiest thing they could endure for for a lifetime, you know. And I just understood that, mm. uh, you know, our people is raised on a bunch of beliefs that that is based on fear, man. You know, uh, the main character of, of, of this place is fear. Uh, we are raised by fear. We are taught by fear. We are, we, we love by fear, you know. It's, it's all based on fear. We think from a fear perspective. It's always like, what if, what will happen if I do this? You know? The concept of fear is what I think drove us into an, an emotional reaction. Because let's agree that we live in, 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 like in the Middle East, man, and we know how it's go, it goes here. We don't put the rules, we just obey them. Mm. Because the rules come from a different, a different type of word. We, we don't know what the real word is. Like even, even you, man, like Egypt has a bit more, uh, uh, you know, an interaction with, with daily life, like, you're actually living in 2021, mm. but uh, trust me, in Damascus, like people don't know the outside world, like they don't know what what does it look like, you know? They have no idea. Like literally, people are living inside of a box for the fa for the past 50 years, I guess. Man, to be yeah, to be heck honest, and it didn't start at 10 years. It started 50 years ago, and we have to understand that it's it, it's the whole process and the the 50 next years, you know, and 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 it's like the whole plan till the whole plan be achieved, and because it's a plan, man, you know, uh, just uh, the way it's happening, uh, and the way everything is uh, being led to, like everywhere now. And you know, there's one purpose. 
to make the, the big great Israel. Like that's my that's my point of view. Like everything happening all around the world is related to Israel in a way. Because let's be clear, you have to you, you have to admit that Israel is a state now, whether you like it or not. You know, in the world they have mm. they have something they have something that many great countries doesn't have which is influence influence all over the world and we have to understand that because then we understand wh why everything else happening around us and eventually it, it will all make sense mm. and do you recall any and weird interactions like that one you me about with the Ukrainian uh, militiamen. Yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm not trying to say that uh, only one side was bad. Uh, uh, like both sides have have done a lot, you know. Like I've been, I had a lot of interactions with, with both sides, uh, based on what I've did in my life, based on volunteering and in the shelters I just told you about. Uh, based on on the concept of not accepting fear, even even now, even now, like uh, until now, I'm interacting with with both sides. Based on heck, they're trying to implant fear, just heck, basic fear that you're not allowed to do this, even if you're not doing anything. So I don't I don't want to talk about it because uh, it's really personal. It's really personal. Uh, I got kidnapped twice, and of course. Uh, yeah, and uh, like I don't want to. I don't think it will affect the story. You know, it doesn't even matter. I just um, like I see it now that I uh, that I was only a tool. Like uh, <clears throat> I believe it didn't happen to me personally because it happened to me personally. It just happened to me because it has to happen to someone, and that someone is me. So it's irrelevant, I th I think. So I'm sorry, but uh, I don't think I don't, I want to talk about that. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. And um, was your education affected? Like, did your school close down in 2011? Yeah, yeah I, I left my own my school in 2012 and 12 actually, not 11. After one year, uh, I had to move uh, to another school. And to another community, like I've lost all of my friends, I've lost my place, like my memories, everything related to me, like my pictures since I was like one year, one years old, uh, one month, or actually one month old. You know, I've lost all of that, and I have no memory of my past, of my past life because it's all like it's gone with my with my old house back in Yermukka. And uh, I moved into Damascus for the first time, and it was it was a new culture, even from Yermuk. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the city was difficult at the first place, and uh, like I didn't have any idea of what what is happening or what what I'm gonna do like in the future. And the situation was really bad, you know, gunfights everywhere, uh, bombs, uh, like it, it was like, like planes all over the place. And it was, it was really difficult to stay sane at that point, you know. Uh, and I started there, uh, like, re-understanding life. I've met a lot of people in Damascus. Uh, people who come from different backgrounds, who have different beliefs, who have different goals, who do different things, you know. And just meeting all of these people, these colored people, uh, it made me realize that life has so much more to offer than what I thought. Uh, like when I got my head out of the box that I was put in, in Yermuk, because of when you when you're raised in, in a culture that 
the main reason for for the existence of them is this cause you know it's difficult to see anything else you start believing that this is your only cause you're meant to be to do this you know to to participate in this war that it's been going on forever and you have to do it too because unless you are a traitor or you don't love your country and all of that you know all over the world and yeah. at some point i just understood that life has so much to offer and uh, life has so many different outcomes and i just reached a conclusion that uh, I just want to be me, you know. I don't want to be anybody too in idealizing any cause, wherever it is. I'm just gonna idealize myself and be true with myself and have a, a real reflection, or you know, a reflection on people and on the place, and to have a, a real impact in changing, changing for the good, not for a cause, changing. Changing people, you know, changing the manners of people. Like uh, we have a, a big, a big misunderstanding of what is normal and what is abnormal, and trying to set clear of 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 that is the best you can do in the meantime. Because I told you, I I have a perspective of life that it takes a lot more than we think. Like time is is something more valuable than we think of of it you know and i think we need about 40 years or 50 years to make to make any kind of of difference in this area over here like it will never make make it we will never make it as people you know we need to educate yourself we need to lose fear at the first place we need to set a goal straight we need to lose all the shitty shit related to religion let's be clear about that because religion okay. Is a big big ruler in this country you know religion affects things like like really bad you know in a way that mm. sometimes you just feel like it all started from religion like the idea of religion getting people together based on religion based on ethnics based on whatever you know grouping people and having like i don't know small armies related to to us, in a way, <laughs> it, um, I'm sorry, I'm switching between Arabic and, and English, but you know, sorry, I no, think I have good. something to say in Arabic for the second, so yeah. Mm. Uh, so I, I just think that that we need to understand more what we want and to start thinking as individuals not as groups not as as you know sides of the world start thinking as individual but united like that and that makes a nation and that what makes a nation you know and, and a true nation would, would defeat any kind of regime uh, any kind of policy any kind of idealizing you know because it's a nation and to achieve a nation, you have to start breaking everything that is like disrupting that process right now, which is, I don't know, everything, <laughs> like, like literally everything. Hmm. And in what way do you think uh, moving to Damascus has affected your personality and your thoughts and your beliefs? Yani, uh, it should opened a lot. Uh, it showed me a different lifestyle or a different way of living, different beliefs. And I started listening to everyone. You know, everyone has something to say. And I spent a lot of years just listening and observing, seeing everything from a third eye, you know. Uh, and I think got to a conclusion that uh, I'm trying to be a decent man, eventually. A true decent man. Like, I, I want to respect myself before anyone respects me. With my, with my own self, you know? 
So everything started changing because uh, before Damascus, I wanted to change the world, like actually, <laughs> you know, I was this kid who had big dreams of changing the world. You know? But then Damascus yeah. showed me that I should cha start changing myself, you know. I should start uh, observing myself and controlling my actions, my reactions, uh, understanding people's reactions to my actions, and just trying to be a decent person and someone who actually makes an impact. And I think I'm was really it happy that I reached a, a point. specific situation that... Uh... No, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, no, nothing. I have nothing to say. Okay. Uh, was there a specific situation or um, a situation you were put in that uh, led you to think that way? Or is it just the whole general experience of moving to Damascus? Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think the whole journey, you know, uh, every chapter of it is important. But the whole story... Made, made me understand that, yeah. Mm. And if you could go back, would you change anything? No, of course not. Because I told you now uh, in Damascus, I don't, I don't want to leave. Like I have to say this, uh, I don't want to leave at the meantime. I think I still have more to offer, like giving back to the community, you know? And, and I think uh, I'm doing a role that some, not a lot of us is doing. And I'm trying to really dedicate my life toward this goal. And when you're able to achieve that, you would reach it eventually because that's life. You know, you set up a goal and you reach it. So I just feel like, you know, I don't want to change anything because every bad thing has affected in the same way as every good thing happened. So, yeah, no, I won't change anything. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to go back to the UK anytime uh, soon, at least. <laughs> no, actually, I have like, I have something that I want to do here, and it's photography related, and I have like a bunch of crap. Um, if you want to, like, of course, go on. Yeah, mm, I have a project now uh, uh, that actually sums up my whole story in a way and I told you before that pictures mm. are emotional to me because it's only a reflection of my inner self it's always like that uh, that's why I take a that's why I take a picture at the first place it, because it reflects something from inside of me so I see it through my lens and that's it mm. even even when I when I take pictures of people that's that's how it goes. Like I can't I can't take a picture of someone I don't really know because and then then I don't know what to expect in a picture of him. Do you get me? Like that that's how I think of it. Like I ha I have to know it deep down and then I can really take a good picture of it to really show it in it in its truest form. You know. Mm. Yeah, and uh, my project is called The City Thief, you know, and I like to think of myself as this city thief <laughs> who's trying just to to be in the corner, <laughs> you know, uh, with his camera and just mm. really taking pictures of of em of their emotions because... That is the hardest thing you could ever do. Take 
a picture of someone emotion so uh, it's been for about a year no i started thinking about this and starting putting a clear plan and i've taken a lot of photos related to this and eventually i want to to reach a point where i can do a book that has short i don't know infographs in arabic of course mm. uh, because because uh, by the way I, I i really believe that everything we are doing should be in arabic because at some point uh, it's our culture and uh, if you really want to make an impact you have to do it in your own language because you would actually feel it you cannot make an impact in 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 another in another background or in another place because you won't understand what what means to them and what affects them and how you're gonna i don't know play a part in their life because i think we're meant to be born here to do that here you know because someone has to do it here no one is trying to do it here so at least some of us has to try you know Uh, getting back to the project, sorry. Uh, I was saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to tell a story about the city uh, through my own perspective, uh, through my own emotions to the city, uh, throughout the journey, and throughout my memories. Even it's personal. Like there's a lot of parts in this project that are really personal to me. Like it's really personal stories that i want i think it's a part of the city story from my own eyes you know it it helps yeah. shapes the city more for me and the more i get to conclusions of the city the more i can take true picture of it you know mm. and uh, speaking of that project you're talking about uh why do you say it's a project you mean like it's going to be an album uploaded online or you, you'll be hosting an exhibition a photo exhibition yeah yani, i really hope that i reach a point that i can make a book uh, i want this as a book not an, an exhibition or even an online an online post like uh, it's a book you know it's a book that you that you read that has pictures that has uh, little infographs uh, and mm. eventually you would you would feel like you've watched a movie like um, I, I'm, I want I, actually I wish <laughs> I wish if I could like mm. get to a point where this book would feel like a movie like a short movie that you're watching because you're watching with your own eyes and you are building the scenes inside of your head and you're cutting you're putting the right music but it's a book you know it will always get to every person in a way because uh, when you do an exhibition the lighting would affect the moods of the people you know so i think a book is the truest form of getting the read reaction out of someone because uh, he's going to have it all alone and he will read it like by himself so no one will even slightly affect his mind or the way he sees it so you will get the truest reaction out of him and that's why i'm thinking of making a book eventually hmm. to be honest it sounds like a great idea like yeah i would buy it if i had the opportunity <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I would, I would send, I would send a copy. You know, I would send the copy with all the love. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. And walk me through your daily life. Like, uh, what do you do when you wake up? Um, do you go out with your friends? Like, how is life like? Real life. Okay. Um, real life. Um, uh, here in Damascus, um, I'm a part of a community. Like a small community uh, of youth, like us, who has personal projects and a personal career that they chose, you know. And 
we just live life sharing life together you know throughout the journey we don't see each other every day but like every week or so we get you know we gather around we spend the night we listen to some good music we laugh we talk we share decisions we share life issues and in some way i found a family that i really didn't have in the past and all of us i think in some way have a family now like we we actually help each other face difficult life difficulties you know and that's is something so noble and so beautiful in a way that i just really think uh, that i should be thankful for this for for this community for all of these people who are who are actually can make an impact uh, worldwide you know not just locally people who are really important who really mm. dedicated life to 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 a purpose who really spend days and nights learning about this you know not just saying it because here you have two like two sides people who just talk too much and they know how to make a cover and they would make it because people are don't really know how to judge because we don't have a standard here like over in Egypt like uh, the big production companies uh, reached a point that uh, you have some really decent qualities you know over here we don't have that we don't have a standard for for a good quality so anything that you can do would would amaze a, a group of people <laughs> do you know that like it's the easiest country to make it yes, <laughs> right? yeah yeah it's really easy <laughs> to make it here because yeah because because you can you can at least take get the attention of of your neighborhood and you would be a star in your neighborhood and that's it you know so yeah mm. i think this community is trying is trying to do this is trying to change the way we see we see things all around you know trying to to provide a decent quality mm. uh, to change the way people see things to uh, to set up a standard if you want you know to create something out of the existence, you know, like from anywhere. And uh, that's daily life, you know. Uh, and what? I, I take, yeah, sorry. And what's what's the worst thing about living in Damascus? Uh, el- electricity <laughs> and uh, economics. <laughs> yes. Mm. I mean, it's it's expensive. But it's really expensive, man. It's really expensive. Mm. It's exhaustingly expensive. Yeah. You know? And we don't have a lot of electricity over here. <coughs> electricity. Mm. Sorry. Uh, and uh, it's really difficult to live here without, you know. Uh, uh, getting affected by daily life uh, and it will affect your your personality it will affect your mind state it will affect your mental health and it's so difficult to bypass all of that and uh, at a point it's the best place to be to, to, to live in I mean, it's a strange city you know everything is bad but at the same time the spirit of the city offers something different like you know uh, the best the best part of the day when I, when when it's midnight and you're just walking in the streets having a beer talking laughing and you don't see that a lot here but mm. a few of us do it and it's the best thing you could imagine for someone who likes to enjoy a beer in the middle of the night it's the best city to offer that like a lot of a lot of things like i'm just saying the beer example but take a lot of true moments that you can't find any place else just you just have it in the city in the best way you could ever ask for mm-hmm. and have you seen any uh journalists or tourists or anything in Damascus? 
يعني in the last four years I don't think so uh, even even myself I wasn't in the last four years I wasn't really trying to connect with new people uh, because I was mm. focused on my path and uh, uh, first I started uh, studying IT uh, I, <laughs> I should have told you that before I studied IT for for three years and then I dropped out and then I went to the higher institute for dramatic arts mm. um, yeah uh, so basically after after I dropped out uh, I was so focused on what I wanted to do and where I want to go and I, wa- I wanted to change my whole life you know and I started from zero like literally I dropped out of everything like I've left my parents' house because they didn't accept the fact that I'm dropping out of college and changing my whole career. My, my whole career, and uh, I it was difficult. In the first place, like uh, I lived a couple of months, like on the streets, you know, not on the streets, but you know, heck, as a passenger, heck, from one house to another. Because mm. I had I, I, I had mm. a lot of good friends who really stood by, you know. But then things started to go well. Things started to balance a bit. Um, I got comfortable in a way I've never <laughs> experienced before. Like, you know, uh, like the pleasure of living. I understood the pleasure of living, you know. And then... Heck, I was so focused, so I got caught up in life, and I, I've met a lot of great people, you know, a, a lot of great people in these four years. But uh, I wasn't, I wasn't really interacting with the bigger society, if you wanna, if you wanna say it in that way. Like I've, I've known a lot of people from this inner society that I was talking about, who are just beautiful people, and just. And uh, and I believe in them. Like I believe in them. Every one of them that they are gonna make it. They're gonna be important, you know. And be, because because of this experience, you know, uh, uh, people who survived Damascus uh, have have a strength of some sort that I cannot even explain. Like nothing affects us. Like <laughs> I'm not exaggerating, but uh, uh, what what we've been through mm. uh, has reached us uh, to a point that we're actually dead from inside, but we don't care. So we're making fun of of being dead, you know. So nothing will affect you. Nothing nothing will mm. break you anymore, you know. And I'm ta- I'm talking about the fear fact. Like every one of these people has has broken the fear fact. I mean, I, I never actually thought about it uh, this way. That when you, you don't have fear in you anymore, you become uh, more human. You live more. I never thought about it. And do you think Egypt has an influence um, on your life, for example, like uh, the movies, the songs, everything? Do you think it affects you or it plays a huge fa- factor in uh...
Mm. And what's your favorite movie? It doesn't have to be Egyptian. <laughs> no, 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 anything. The, your favorite one. <laughs> what's the name? I didn't hear it. It's called love. Let me look for it. Oh. <laughs> hmm. And if there is one thing you could change about about um, about the world in general, or about Syria, whatever you you want to talk about, if there is one thing you could change, what would it be? Mm. No, 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 of course, of course, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 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 I mean, yes, we are, of course, but uh, not the, not exposed to the Syrian rap scene. We're exposed to, to the Palestinian rap scene. Like, you know, Shab Jadid? Yes, <laughs> I think he had the, his biggest fan base is in Egypt, <laughs> not in Palestine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
and um, and who else? Um, Uh, Syrian. Mm. Really? <laughs> he lives in uh, Damascus. And who else? You told me that we should know else. Because I'm looking for them. Salam Nasr. I'm looking for them. But Salam Nasr hasn't uploaded anything in over a year on his YouTube channel. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so as a closing uh, remark, uh, do you have anything you want to add before we close the podcast? Anytime. <laughs> Of course. I want to thank you once again. For... Go ahead, go ahead. Mm. No, thank you, man, for coming. Um, uh, it's been a very fruitful conversation. And I think um, I personally uh, learned a lot from it. And I'm sure you also did. And we explored many topics together. And um, I'm, I'm really... I'm really looking forward to uh, your book. <laughs> yes, signed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't believe in many things, man. <laughs> Okay, thank you once again and uh, to everyone listening to the podcast uh, um, episode is available on youtube apple podcasts pocket casts spotify anchor google podcasts and basically anywhere you could uh, find podcasts thank you and that's it <laughs>